see how this forever is going. I'm curious because forever. We're on to. Wait, did I say semis? Crap, I'm gonna say quarters. This is semifinals. Darn it. I. I don't know. Okay. Apparently, I'm a bit tired. We're at semifinals now. I'm sorry, that was actually quarterfinals, not semifinals. That's gonna be a problem when it comes to me actually dealing with the game. Okay, wow, that. Wow, apparently they've been playing for a while. So yeah, failed us and forever. Forever is. Wow, expanding quite quickly. How far are we in the game? Seven minutes in the game. Sheesh, I missed a lot. Oops. Oh well, I wanted to see what forever was gonna do. Sorry about that big fast forwarding. We'll have to try to figure out what happened. I really wish you could just tell it not to bother and just have the delay in the game. I guess a default thing, but whatever. Doesn't matter. It's it's happened. So at this point, let's see. Fail thoughts and forever, even economically, not even militarily, forever has quite a bit less territory. And fail thoughts is light vehicle on Cloaky, with forever going for the air switch, going for the Wyvern. Risky play, probably going to try to take out the factory directly. Stop Felthos' military advantage. And then the north side... That north side... Hmm. Felthos going for gunship. Forever just about done the Wyvern. Now well, 30 seconds left, I'm about just about. Especially the economic rating coming in here. Felthos is pushing Forever pretty hard. I. Okay, so the north side had a Stardust. Had being the upper board. Failthos looks like they're pretty close to winning. This Wyvern has to be intelligently used. Looks like... Is it going to be used on here because that would not... Well, that would be a terrible idea. I think taking on the factory would probably be a better choice. For reference, Wyverns... Oh, never mind. No, it would take two Wyverns to take out the factory. That would be a bad choice. Taking on the Caretakers, though, that's a great choice. And no, it's going to be the factory. Yep. Or no, the caretakers. Good, 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 good. That's what you want to get rid of. Nail the caretakers first. Takes like, two shots to kill a factory. Way too much damage is required for that. We need two Wyverns to do that. And I don't think another one's going to be built. Or two passes with the Wyvern. Not going to happen, though, because caretakers are a thing and they repair everything. It looks like forever. They've lost all the territory to the north. They've lost all the territory in the center. So the territory we saw them get and actually get an advantage in at first... Nope, not anymore. They are falling behind. Nice use of Terraform Stardust, though. Yeah, see what they mean. They really are taking advantage of the game's mechanics as much as possible to give them an advantage. Taking advantage of all the little tricks that you can use. Like I said, I can respect the hell out of that. I think that's awesome. But at this point, yeah, they have the Wyvern. Nothing else is really being built. I mean, obviously there's Cloakies being built, but no other air units. And are there tridents coming up here? No! Are, are there any gunships? I don't think there are. No, it looks like Felthos... Oh, they have a couple tridents. That's that's it. Two tridents and nothing else. Focusing entirely on building the ground force. I suppose two tridents is probably enough to deal with whatever comes through. Although, Wyverns are quite tough. Alright, so Forever probably gonna use the assist build out here. They have no economy to do with, though. They have nothing to build with. I don't really know how this is going to work. Well, probably not in Forever's favor at this rate. Oof. Ouch. Not enough splash damage. I, they might have gone for the commander, and that would have been an instant kill. That would have been fairly powerful, too. There are no workers in this area. That would have left the area open for a little while. Unfortunately, they missed. But... I suppose they could try to rush in next time. No, okay, looks like the caretakers just being used for the Cloakybot factory. There really aren't enough caretakers to support this. I guess Forever's expecting to either get a bunch of reclaim or retake all of this territory. I don't share that expectation. Mind you, I have a much more omniscient viewpoint. So I have a reason for that. Yeah, that's the thing. Wyverns don't really have the splash damage that, say, Phoenixes do. So Forever's Commander, now dead. But yeah, it's really meant for single high-value targets, like Commanders. Factories, not so much. Factories are, like I said, they need two. 
But if you have two of them, factories. Like high value targets, single high value targets. That is what you need to use. To, that's what you need to get rid of. That's what you use it for. But that isn't happening. That's not what Forever's doing. Oh, never mind. This actually, these are clumped up quite a lot. That could work. Is it going to be? Yep. Yep, it is. Okay, that's actually not terrible. That's giving Forever a fair bit of breathing room. I rise to say that, of course, these Scorchers come in, so never mind. Not that much breathing room. I mean, Failedoss really hasn't lost a lot of territory. Forever is at half the economy. They're just rebuilding these metal extractors. It's been a few minutes since I just lost them, so I don't know. Not the most efficient. It's, it's always a tricky thing to do, is remembering to rebuild metal extractors. It's also a very worthwhile thing to do. If you do that, then you end up with a much stronger economy than you would otherwise, and Forever appears to be setting up to take the southwest, and they are, in fact, about to do so. Yeah, I mean, sorry, not Forever. Felthos, Felthos is taking the southwest. Forever's not going to be able to retake the southwest anytime soon. And another attempt at killing the commander, apparently, and another failed attempt at killing the commander. Level 1, too. I mean, this press Felthos doesn't just upgrade and not have to worry about it ever again. Ooh, Heavy Tank Factory. Are we seeing Tremors? Or are we seeing Reapers for a straight-up punch? Nope. Reapers. We're going for the straight punch. And with the Rapiers coming in... Yeah, three Tridents, four Rapiers. Those Rapiers are going to make short work of any Glaives that try to come around. The Tridents, of course, getting rid of the air units as necessary. The Reapers will... Well, they can punch through here pretty quick. The south side probably won't fall too fast to them. Like I said, Veldos has taken the south side. Forever actually is surprisingly being quite aggressive when it comes to how they're building up, but they have to be at this point. There's not much they can do other than just push everything they can, all the money out they can. There we go. Oh, nice splash there. Well done. Got rid of a lot of, got a lot of units there. Okay, that Wolverine hitting the forces has actually been working out decently well. So, okay, I'll, I'll give it that. That's actually been, that's been fairly effective. Glad to see that, because Wolverines... I mean, sort of glad to see that. On the one hand, Wolverines might be the new Ravens. But, I don't know, that's still pretty expensive. And basically, the entire this entire force is now protected by anti-air. Although, I say they're the new Ravens because they can actually hit air units. That's a thing. Mind you, Ravens could always bomb out with gunships, but still, yeah, they can hit air units. I mean, it can be dodged, but still, they can hit air units. Are we going to see the... Is it, yeah, no. Forever is clearly trying to figure out, what do I want to kill? Do I want to kill the commander? Do I want to kill a random Lotus? Because... Random Lotus? I don't know, that was weird. The commander was right there, unmorphed and everything. Like, seriously, you know it's there. Actually, do you know it's there? I don't know, let's... Let's see, before I... Yeah, yeah, you, you know it's there. Y you know where it is. You can target it. It's on radar. It is a valid target. And now the Reapers are going to get themselves killed. Like, one of them already dead. The second one's soon to go. Those rape your slow missiles. Those are a pain. Ow, nice dodge. Those those Ravagers dodged it well. But I'm so surprised. Okay, Felthas now more from their commander. So, yeah. What I said before about the commander being vulnerable target, a good target, completely false now. The commander will not go down in one Wolverine shot. Not anymore. Wolverine and Raven, yes. If it hits simultaneously, I think so. I think it goes up to like 2,500, but that depends on what, what they have. They might have HP modules. In which case, no. Well, still, though, those Reapers coming in. Forever is not... Not going to go down quietly. And failed us 2,500. Okay, that's no HP modules. 2,500. Ooh, radar jammer. Yep, doesn't show up on radar anymore. I'm surprised it doesn't show the color, though. Yeah, I don't see the jammer color. That's weird. Yeah, now it's radar jamming. Handy thing. Not used a whole lot, though. Not in commanders. I mean, 
Conjurers have it. Have a radar jamming field around them. But I have not really seen anyone use the radar jammer module on a commander. That's new. And another Reaper gonna go down. That's another 800 metal. Another, like, 500 metal donated. Oh, 340, never mind. 340 metal donated. Bit of a problem. Also, I'm not sure I totally agree with the Copperhead. I mean, Copperhead kind of makes sense in theory because it is anti-air, but accuracy. Banishers are generally used as the anti-air for the tank factory. Not Copperheads. Banishers with the homing missiles, that's basically the de facto anti-air. I mean, if you're dealing with a bunch of Swifts, for example, then yeah, the Copperhead makes sense. Or just a large clump of units. But it's not happening. Not right now. Banishers, however, can deal with ground as well as air, and can deal with air in a homing fashion. Very effective that way. And apparently the Rectors just want to die. Oh, I see. Trying to dig it into a hole. Trying to dig that Dante into a hole. Well, they missed. However, that's still a lot of... That will burn. You know, Vern's in the Reapers, but I still think this is it. Belthos basically has this game. They should be able to push in with this, and that'll be it. That, that will be game. There we go. Forever losing game one. Are they going to go down to loser's bracket? I mean, they've already gone to semifinals, and the actual semifinals, not the quarterfinals I called semifinals. Actual semifinals. So we're, we'll see. But for now, yeah, moving in. So Google Frog and Yogg's Dot, that is the other semifinals match going on right now. And Kane and Flores has not been settled yet. I don't know who I'm going to be co-commentating with ultimately. Well, first. Obviously, if, if they beat Aquanim, then I suppose they keep going. But yeah, whoever loses in that match, I just find it amusing. I just find it really funny. And no indication yet. Nope, the game's going strong. It's been going strong for about 14 minutes now. All right, and now we are... Oh, of course we are, because we're forever. I forgot about this. We are on Icy Run. Yep. Wow. Interesting starting position. Loki on Cloakie. Loki versus Cloakie. Well, that's what we're going to be playing. So yeah, Icy Run, for those of you not familiar, is an extremely small map. It has, like, five metal extractors per player. <laughs> Like six or so, like twelve. It's like plus twelve metal total available on the map if you split it in half. I don't even know. This map takes a surprisingly long time to play out, oftentimes. Just it's bigger than it looks, and the choke points matter a lot more than they seem. Usually gets into a bit of a slog in the center. I don't really like that. Okay, Lori pointing out the banisher doesn't have much range. That's a fair point. Banisher's range isn't that big, but at the same time. If you're getting hit, banishers are better. If you're trying to, I suppose, do what Forever was doing, which is take out some air units when they're out of the way, then yeah, Copperhead makes sense. But Banisher deals so much more damage. I think it's cheaper, too. Anyway, Fail Thoughts with the Scythe. While Forever can't really do much thanks to that Lotus, that's... Add the commander, the commander to upgrade, but uh, one glaive isn't enough. You need, like, five or six. Against a battle comm, I think you need at least six. I mean, I don't know if... I mean, I did actually at one point kill a commander with glaives, but that was a recon comm with like four or five glaives. And that... Ooh, nice! That's like avoiding detection. Nicely scouting out, so Failthos right now has some idea. They don't know exactly where the units are coming from, though. Looks like they're probably trying to focus on something else right now. Setting that scythe into a safe position. There we go! Now the scythe is continuing to scout, and this should be good. This is... maybe good? I don't know. Does Felthos see the commander? I mean, they might. I don't know. I don't think they do. Well, at any rate... This is going to... Uh, forever's ahead economically. Huh. Yeah, forever's, a, forever's ahead economically. They have their back mechs as well. I mean, they started very forward, so that helps a ton. 
especially on this map, and these sides are basically just scouting out. Okay, the commander position is definitely known. Feltos knows exactly where the commander is. What they need to do right now, and they're probably doing, is to get a scythe here. Nice. Good attention. They're probably, like, zoomed out at this level and just jumping back and forth. But that is a bit of a problem. Make sure that the commander doesn't get too close. Okay, now we're going to have that that showdown. I mean, it's 400 damage a swing. So five swings from both of them will kill the commander and even out the economy. That's the biggest thing. And there we go. We're going to hit. There we go. That's three, four. And... Oh, it's not going to be 200 each. Oh, it's supposed to be 200. What the heck? That was weird. Maybe distance or something? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Forever has lost their commander. Failed us. However, has lost part of their economy as well. Not their commander, though, so if, right now, Forever basically cannot easily push. That push they were doing, not not really viable. However, they had good defenses. They had the defenses set up to have still kind of a hard position to crack at this point. And they're still being tricky on the hills as well, so this is not easy. Veltos, despite getting rid of the commander, has really not dealt a huge amount of damage. Forever is still ahead economically, despite the loss of their commander. That's how much of this forward... That forward cloaky butt factory gave them a lot. They gave them a huge amount of leverage to work with. I mean, failed us at this point. They're probably going to try to figure out where the heck is Forever's head of their factory? I don't get this. And another scythe attack. Although Forever's going to lose... Yeah, Forever lost that, but still, that's... That's huge. I mean, the commander is starting to get close to under threat. These warriors and Zeus coming in, that's actually a bit of a problem. Failed I mean, they won't lose their commander to that warrior. Especially with, no, the commander's not great. Yeah, that warrior will be a possible issue. Okay, this is going to be a huge problem. Yeah, forever, even with that, even with that harassment, they will probably be able to take out Felshaus's commander fairly shortly. Yeah, two warriors is enough, and the zoos for extra assistance, tanking basically. Put the Zeus forward first. The Warriors deal the damage. The Zeus takes the damage. I think Forever could take the game that way. Like, Felthos, they're just now rebuilding their metal extractors. Are they rebuilding it? I don't know. They have something. Yeah, they have They have their first Conjurer set up to rebuild it. I should point out that Forever at this point has like two Conjurers that they've had running around the map. One of them on Reclaim, too. Reclaiming their own commander. So even losing the commander hasn't been a big deal. Forever way ahead economically. Failthos is trying to figure out what the heck happened and realizing now there the factory is. Like now they know that the factory is right. Well, they soon to find out. I'm sure they suspect just because it's the last place they have to look. And yep, now they know. The factory is exactly there. That conjurer is still not up. I mean, that's, that's 8 metal per second. That's not good. Especially with the... Okay, the morph going on is probably what's stopping it. But at this point... What else is what else is Feldot supposed to do? That morph is basically necessary in the scythe being chased back, it's gonna die. Or is it? Yeah, probably. And forever as well, just taking everything out. That scythe is down, that commander's about to go down, the glaives going from one glorious last stand. Well, Feldot's good waiting. Being pretty patient on that. Actually, that warrior is going to go down. Is that warrior down? Ooh. Dodged it out, but that's not going to be enough. The Zeus won't be a problem either. Rockets will beat Zeus. But at the same time, Glaze beat Rockets. So, Failthos has put themselves in a bit of a tricky position. Still forever. Yeah, rebuilding that. Build up, Rebuild that. Build up more metal extractors. They're going to probably take this game. Although, Failthos... 14. Oh, right, reclaim, that's why. Yeah, at this point, no metal extractors whatsoever. Just now setting up. Reclaim helps, but still, not that much. Like, forever... Forever, this... Bearing in mind, this is... Like, subtract about 1,500 from Failthos's number. Forever has three times the actual army value. In terms of real army value, or rather, in terms of non-commander army value, the commander still counts. But yeah, the commander, that's three quarters of Failthos' military value right now. So Forever is doing extremely well militarily. 
Mind you, the commander is also at the front line, so I suppose that actually does count. Still, that commander is... Oh, it's gonna be a bit of a problem. Possibly a bit of a problem. But mostly due to building defenses, that's the biggest problem. If those Zeus get rid of them, it'll be... Okay, what... Okay, at this point, forever... I can see what they're doing. They're trying to get the Zeus just to tank out and all that. At this point, they probably should consider Rocco's. Oh, nice Scythe. Good Scythe usage. Like, Trevor's really been using the Scythe well. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with how they're setting up their frontline forces, but that Scythe. Can't argue with that Scythe. Actually, this is where you should attack. Trevor, go in for the kill right now. Like, this is... And, yeah, Trevor realizes this. Like, wait a sec. I could attack right now. Everything's out of position. Oh, no, they're... What? Everything's out of position. And Forever's going for the sneaky move. I'm starting to think that might be pathological. I mean, seriously. It's open. It's... The glaives are out of position. They cannot fight back here. And you're running straight into them. Why? I mean, Forever doesn't know that, but it's like... Well, it sort of does. Knows they're out of position. Actually... No! Forever does know this! They know exactly where they are. They have all the radar and everything. They have all the knowledge they need about those glaive positions. They also know that they're out of position and that all that's here are some static defenses in the commander. Basically forever can just overwhelm that commander, have a local advantage, and take it out. If they take out the commander, that's gonna be a massive blow. But they haven't done that. I don't get it. Like, that was the perfect timing and now, now the glaives have returned. Now the timing's gone. Not to mention the added defenders to deal with. I, I don't get that. If Forever loses this game, that'll be why. And wait a sec. Wait a sec. The win counter not update properly. Yeah, I probably should have pointed out two icy run. They took they way too bloody fast in setting up. Seriously, way too fast in setting up. Give me a give me a chance for goodness sakes. I don't know if they realize I'm actually commentating this match. But yeah, forever, <clears throat> their timing window is gone. I mean, Feltas's commander is a bit forward, so they could. And it looks like they might be trying to, but yeah, that timing window is gone. Long gone. But I think forever should be able to take it back from here. I think. I'm not totally sure. Okay, that's weird. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where the heck I had. At one point, I had the the. Where'd it go? Seriously, I knew I had the, the config file here. Whatever, I'll just I'll change it later. Anyway, I'm not sure why it doesn't list that Feltos has a win, but Feltos has a win. So yeah, it's one zero for Feltos right now. If Feltos wins this, but I don't think they will. At the same time, though, Feltas is not losing anytime soon and is pushing forward. I think, I don't know, it might be a slow and steady thing. Feltas might actually win this. I'm, I'm really not sure. This will be interesting. I think that Feltas probably. Hmm. And how these glaives come in here? That's economy gone. Reapers are taking a while to build up. I mean, Forever does only have plus seventeen. Hmm. Okay, good. Getting rid of that radar, that's a huge, huge deal. What? Not sure what happened there. But yeah, at this point, failed hostage commander is at level 2! So rockets with range, and even more health. So dealing with this commander is going to be a problem. Now, if failed Hoss loses this commander, that's game. That's it. This this commander is everything. Feel and Endel needs to kite perfectly, and doing so is going to be damn near impossible. I don't know, though. These glaives could be... Actually, that will be the problem. That will be a pretty big problem, in fact. Nicely done. Distracting... That's all they needed to do. Distract the Zeus enough. Push it back. That is what needed to happen, and that's what happened. So at this point, I think... 
I think at this point it's going to be Pelthos. I mean, it's pretty even right now. Pelthos hasn't won. I mean, their commander, their commander rushing forward into a really dangerous position, but two Zeus's are about to go down right away. There we go. One down, and where's the second one? There's the second one. So at this point, the army value is going in Pelthos' favor. Pelthos has got their economy built up. Took them a little while. I mean, they, they were struggling, but they have set up. There are no sides coming in so far. And there aren't quite enough glaives to deal with that warrior right now, but still, this is going to be a problem. Feldhaus's commander, however, heavily threatened. That Reaper is going to be a problem. That Reaper gets one more shot in. That's going to be death, and that Reaper will get one more shot in because that commander cannot get out of the way fast enough. And that commander, if it goes down, which is about to, goes down. That burst takes out all the glaives forever. Now it has yet another chance to get back in here, but this Reaper is about to die. That Reaper, is it going to go down? That is such a risky thing. If that Reaper goes down... No, Feldos throws in the towel that they're one shot. We are on to game three. And that is going to be on Feldos' choice of map. Well done forever, but man, that was close. Oops. I mean, Feldos had basically just that one, one attack. That was it. If they had won that attack, they would have won. And they ended up losing the attack, and so they lost. But I mean, that's just... That's what I mean. That's how close it was. So close. So ridiculously close. Oh wait, Floris, no! No, apparently Floris lost, but I... Wait. Oh, it was Forever Calling Phil, that was an idiot. For not raiding. Okay, that sort of makes sense. Okay, so Kane went ahead, Floris is... Loris is apparently not going to go commentate. I don't know. And Clone also continuing. Apparently, Lord Muff, yeah, lost his Google Vlog. So Clone moving forward. Yurga versus Clone. Clone in the losers round. That would be cool. Kane and Aquinum also an even match. But let's continue with Failthos and Forever because that's the match that's currently happening. And we are on hide and seek. Failthos' favorite map. Why? I should not. I am not surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. And I'm not surprised because Failthos has played so many games in this map. This is Failthos' map. Like, this is the map where if Failthos wants to get stuff done, it's going to happen here. It could be a little while, though. I mean, get your popcorn. This could last like 20, 30 minutes. In fact, I probably should have asked them to wait a sec so I can get some tea. Because they're across washing some dishes. Okay, never mind. Oh, wait, no, I'll have a tea bag. Hmm. Well, I don't really have time right now because I'm basically... Basically, it's whenever Forever places their start location, which is now. And let us begin. Cloaky versus, I think, Cloaky. Yep, Cloaky Mirror. It's a Cloaky Mirror and Forever going for the early Scout Gremlin. I haven't seen that in a while, actually. And Anarchy just started doing that a few months ago, and then after a while, people just figured out how to counter it, and then it hasn't happened. So that's, that's a scouting start. I mean, on this map, it kind of makes sense. It's a fairly large map. You do need information more than anything. And Failthos, instead using the Glaive, just getting around that. Forever, wow, focused very heavily on economy. Failthos, actually, no, same thing. Same, both players, they are focusing early on economy. But Failthos knows this map, sets up the 2.4 first. So much more efficient start from Failthos. I still don't really agree with the way that that's set up. It's not really obvious, unless you're using F4 view, which I don't think a lot of people do. And yeah, Failthos, assuming that Forever knows about this as well, and no, Forever apparently does not. They are not, in fact, going for that particular expansion. Not yet, they are now. But they haven't yet. It's like, oh, whoa, what? Forever doesn't know this map? What the heck? Apparently not. Apparently not that intimately. But I mean, like I said, Failthos has played this map so many times, it is... It's ingrained. They know this map. They are, however, not in the best spot for actually dealing with things. Whoa, what the heck? Oh, maybe they figured the Lotus is getting blocked off? That was weird. Why were those solar collectors blown up? Strange self-destruct. I mean, normally you put solar collectors around the Lotus so that the Lotus has an easier time being defended, but it looks like... Oh, I see. Forever realizing that's where they should... Why did you destroy them? 
Nine and six, that was a really bad idea. I don't know why those were blown up. Oh, okay, that's why, because they're clicking too fast. How do you misclick control D? That's that's not that's not easy to misclick. I wonder what they were trying to do. I, I'm really confused. I mean nothing really around there. Control X maybe. That was like Control Z, Control D, or Control X, Control D. That was. I don't know how you misclicked that. I don't know what for. Maybe Forever has it set. Maybe has it, they have self destruct set to something other than Control D, something that's easier to typo. And right now, Forever does actually know exactly what's going on in Fail Toss's factory, so at least they are able to know what's happening in advance. They can easily respond to that. Whether or not they will remains to be seen. We did see last game that they were pretty good about setting up a mixed force. So they'll probably do what they can to deal with it. Like actually responding with the proper counters. But I don't know. They're still going pure glaive. I guess they have confidence in their micro. Yeah, so this is... Okay, Drone pointing out that Failtoss has a tendency to choke in tournaments, which I can understand. Tournaments are tricky like that. It's... it's... Playing in tournaments is its own skill, although Feltos has played in quite a few. And Icy Run is a, just a tricky map, and Forever, I'm sure, knows that map. It's a map for tricks. Hide and Seek, on the other hand, is a map for econ play. It's a map, actually, It's there's a lot of map knowledge, too, because of the way that economy is laid out, and also just knowing you know, good choke point options. I mean, in general, you got to be careful around here, but also, I mean, Feltos... They're scouting around the edge of the map. They know that any expansions come in, they they need to know what's happening well in advance. Right, they can't let Forever expand along the back, because that's otherwise safe. But Forever hasn't. Failtoss is starting to. They're, they're getting set up there. Forever has not expanded there. They're expanding towards the center. They're expanding inwards. And honestly, not expanding that much. Yeah, Failtoss, they know this map. Forever might know this map. I'm not totally sure. But Failtoss knows it. And yeah, like I said, they're take they're I mean they're scouting around where they need to. Setting up glaze, making sure that there's nothing going around around in the back. I mean they don't know. They don't know that Forever hasn't expanded back here. Forever hasn't expanded back here, but that's unknown. Good placement of Lotus too. I was gonna point that out, but yeah, a lot of the times people set up this fact this like plus three metal expansion and then they lose it. Because it's just remote and they figure, well, no one's gonna hit it, and then they get hit. Fail thoughts, they know this map. They did not fall for that. You undo control D by hitting control D. Wait, paused? What? Okay. Lag issues. Warzone active. Alright, so f forever right now, that's the 15 metal to 20, so Feldos way ahead in metal. They're gonna be, yeah, they're expanding around the back. Forever does seem to have gotten, a, well, they had this glaive before. I wouldn't say they've really gotten wise to the outside edge, though. Feldos has. Feldos realizing Forever not even expanding there. Does Forever know about this? No, they don't. They're completely in the dark. They have no idea these glaives are coming in here. Forever is checking around the back, but they have no idea these glaives are here. They will find out, and they'll find out the hard way. Yep, yeah, Failthoss getting into a good position to attack, and then just ripping apart. Actually, that wasn't the best position. That that allowed Forever room to retreat. Still, Failthoss is getting way ahead. They're already 10 metal ahead. They're a whole caretaker ahead right now. What's this? Yeah, this rear expansion right here, that's... That is huge. Oh, nice distraction play. Forever... Trying to chase away these glaives, not seeing the massive glaives coming in from the back. Like, sure, they chase away a few glaives, and then all of a sudden, nine glaives. The chasing away the glaives, like, all right, all right, pushing Feltas out, yeah. Dead. Oh, yeah, thanks. Three... Sorry, these players are being way too bloody quick Oops. picking maps, so it's very difficult for me to actually get everything 
Normally I have a couple minutes after they pick the map for to actually update everything. But no, it's like, pick map, start game, don't give the commentator any chance to update anything. Like, I'm glad you're being punctual, but, like, give me a minute, please. Like, I have to pretty much, I have to manually exit the game to make sure that the win counter is properly updated, because apparently that doesn't work either. I don't know why. Actually, it might, no, it does now, it does now. I did fix that. Never mind. I don't know why I didn't update properly before, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I fixed that. Well, anyway. And that's, yeah, Feltos wins. Feltos advances, forever goes in the loser's bracket, forever is just surrounded the entire time. They never really had a position on this map. Oh, and Forever pointing out, yeah, lag. Maybe, but honestly, Forever, they just set up the inefficient expansions. They didn't go around the back. They didn't scout around the back very much. They weren't patrolling around the back side of the map. Forever clearly did not know this map very well. So I think Feltos just had the win regardless. Map wins. Map wins are a thing. So yeah, sorry about not updating the bottom. I, I don't like not doing that, but it happens sometimes. Okay, so at this point... Akronim and Kane are continuing along. We have... Google Frog and Yogg South have been playing. They're on their second game. And... Yurga and Clone have been going on for about six minutes. Hmm, what do I want to do right now? Because right now, Fail Toss is on its own. We have these three matches. And then Winner's Finals, I will cast, because, like I said, I kind of have to. It's a blocking match. Google Frog and Yongstoth are on game two. Six minutes in. Kane and Aquanim are 11 minutes in. Clone and Yurga are three minutes in on... This should work. They're three minutes in on Eye of Horus, so let's watch that. That is best of one.